We're in White Shell Provincial Park, uh, to be exact, uh, at West Hawk Lake. There's the self-guiding trail, the Dragon Fire. West Hawk Lake uh, is a uh, meteorite uh, crater. Uh, it is over 300 feet deep. Uh, it is the deepest lake in Manitoba. It, uh, it may have some uh, remnants of that uh, meteorite uh, strike. Uh, we would hope to find something like shatter cones around the outside or, or fractures. But uh, in the past, uh, these have not been reported. So uh, you never know. Uh, geology is an adventure. Every time you go out, things change and you never uh, quite know what you might find uh, if you keep your eyes open. Uh, my Brunton is lying on one of the uh, tops of the uh, 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 portion of the rock steps that we've just come up. And you can see that there are parallel fractures. There's two of them right uh, very close to the Brunton. If I move some of the uh, soil away, uh, there's the wall on this side, another one in through here. From here to here is about 10 inches or so. There's another parallel fracture. This is almost parallel, this one is parallel, this one as well, and there's one below my feet in through here, there's another one down in there, and then all the way down there's a whole collection of parallel fractures. This is what you would expect if uh, a large impact uh, uh, had taken place at uh, this point. You would expect to see the rocks with multiple fractures. Now what should happen as we're walking along the shoreline here, the fracture should change in orientation. If there's a central point in the middle of the lake, and we're near the south end of the lake, so here we would expect the fractures to be generally east-west, maybe slightly uh, to the uh, southeast-northwest. As we are walking, we would hope to find these kinds of fractures doing this sort of thing, where they're going to be parallel like that. We're standing on a rock ridge that's about uh, 100 feet higher than the uh, uh, lower part of the campground where we uh, first uh, were videotaping by the sign. Uh, there's a sign up here on, on the top uh, that the Manitoba Parks Branch has put up and they're uh, discussing and talking about uh, craters uh, in the world and uh, in particular uh, West Ox Crater. Uh, on this particular uh, sign, they tell us that the diameter of the crater is 2.4 kilometers. And uh, they indicate that the crater is usually about 10 times the diameter of the meteorite. So uh, if that's the case, uh, the uh, meteorite would have been about uh, 0.24 uh, kilometers in size uh, that excavated the uh, crater. Okay, so there's a change. Here we're looking at rocks that are about 125, the fractures, and they're all parallel. Again from here, parallel one to there, another one here, another one there, here, and they're all parallel. So we are slowly changing our angle of the fractures from the ones that we saw earlier, where they're starting to in theory, uh, come more to the uh, uh, southeast. At this particular spot, uh, they're describing how a uh, process of creating a uh, crater occurs. And uh, so they've done a diagram showing that particular impact. So I'll uh, just read a little bit of the signage. Uh, I think it's got a good overview. It says a ball of fire smashes into the rock with a huge explosion. The fire that they're referring to is as the a meteor is traveling through the atmosphere of the earth, it heats up and catches fire. So it becomes a meteorite. Now shock waves spread into the rock, compressing it, making it fluid and setting it in motion. The meteorite continues to penetrate into the uh, earth. Rocks are vaporized, melted, and ejected from the forming crater. Then the meteorite itself is vaporized. Everything is just uh, broken up into tiny particles. 
The shock wave continues compressing the rock as it moves down and out. That shock wave is what would be producing these fractures, the one that we had at 115, the one now that we have at 125. Then the fluid rock below the crater shifts from a downward to sideward to upward path and fragments are ejected along growing crater walls. The shock wave slows and the last of the rock is smeared onto the sides of the crater. Then the crater uh, creation stops. The process comes to an end, but rocks ejected into the air, uh, parts of what we would call the bombs uh, that would be carried upward. They fall back and most land outside the area of the crater itself. Then within seconds of the creation of the crater, the sides start slumping and the rocks and rubble fall back into the crater. So the stuff that falls into the crater, which is now occupied by the water of West Hawk Lake, is the fallback breccia that has dropped back inside. And uh, the shock waves that uh, have traveled outward are possibly shown by these fractures, which we've described earlier. So as we're walking along, it'll be interesting to see if the angle from 125 does change and become a, a, a more, uh, let's say around 140 or something. That would be fantastic. Yeah, scuba divers like West Hawk Lake because it is deep and the crater is interesting to explore. Swimming along the crater edges is soaring over cliffs that fall away into darkness. The broken rock is fun to swim around. Divers find quartz seams, flecks of gold, lots of interesting geology. Other reasons uh, why the lake is a good diving spot is the clear visibility. The wind cannot stir up sediment because of the depth. On September 2nd, 2001, two divers reached the bottom of West Hawk Lake, something many consider too dangerous to try. The technology to make that dive that deep has only been available since 1990. The pair spent years preparing to make the dive. What was the bottom of the lake like? It was flat, hard packed black earth. No silt, no vegetation, no fish. It was unlike any lake bottom the divers had ever seen. Now we're going to find out why they've decided to call this uh, a trail through the woods the Flying Dragon. Uh, meteors are particles from outer space, at times as small as a marble, igniting as they enter our atmosphere. Bright meteors may seem very close, but they are usually high above the Earth. A meteor shower occurs when the Earth's orbit passes through a meteor swarm. The shower can last for days with more than 50 meteors an hour. The best time to watch a meteor shower is early in the morning. The best view from a dark open area is like a field. Lie down, look up and count the flying dragons. Now uh, they also have another plaque here and it says there are several reasons why we do not see uh, as many craters on the earth as we uh, might see on the moon. And the earth is always recycling its crust. Some craters have eroded and others are covered. The moon has no wind or water to erode or cover its craters. The earth hides many of its craters under forests and lakes. And this is what we see at uh, West Hawk here is a, uh, a crater uh, uh, a lake uh, as such. Uh, it, it is totally occupying the uh, impact part of the uh, crater. Hello, uh, I'm right beside a glacial erratic. Uh, this is uh, at about three or four feet in uh, diameter. And uh, it, it has a very interesting feature. The major part of the rock here is what we would call a granite. And uh, it does have these large uh, phenocrysts in here of feldspar. Uh, they're coarse, coarse crystals of feldspar. And then there's a finer ground mass. Now, within this total mass of granitic rock, 
is an incorporation of a mafic inclusion. Uh, this inclusion would have been the original country rock, uh, probably volcanic, that was uh, uh, melted into the actual uh, batholith or uh, pluton, uh, the granite pluton. And this piece would have been a remnant of that original rock that was intruded. Now what has happened to it is a number of things. Uh, some Nisic banding has developed around the outside of it, but the uh, major uh, portion of the mafic rock there has got a couple of uh, tendrils. Uh, this is very similar to the uh, uh, carbonate veinlet uh, that uh, it, it can be found in a lot of the greenstone or volcanic rock. But cross-cutting all of the uh, Nisic foliation in through here uh, is a, uh, a, a, a vein that is almost all uh, probably microcline or orthoclase, uh, a, a felspar. And it's a felspathic uh, uh, vein that cross-cuts all of the previous uh, banding, like I said, and some of the textures that might be in this uh, piece of rock. This could even be a remnant of a, uh, a pillow lava, uh, possibly, uh, we really can't tell. It's been incorporated and remelted and heated. So this is metamorphism at, at work. So the rock would have started out as a, a volcanic rock in a volcanic pile, uh, maybe at the bottom or uh, midway up in a, in a volcano. And then this huge intrusion came in of uh, this granite batholith and uh, this piece is a remnant of that uh, particular intrusion. And so uh, uh, th this is uh, interesting geologically and we do see these kinds of mafic inclusions uh, in a lot of the granite plutons. If the process had gone to completion, this would have got remelted completely and remobilized and churned within that batholith and it could possibly have melted in and become totally uh, uh, obliterated. You wouldn't have seen any remnant like it is. But this tells us a bit of the prehistory. So it tells us this rock came first and this rock came later. West Hawk Lake doesn't have any uh, rivers flowing into it. There is drainage, however, out of the lake. Uh, that is probably, again, one of the clues to its meteorite impact origin. Because there is no river system in, then it's unlikely that it was scooped or cut out by some sort of erosional process. So it, it speaks to its unusual nature. Right now we're at one of the outflows, uh, maybe the only outflow of West Hawk Lake. This is where West Hawk Lake falls into Caddy Lake, which is off to my uh, left here uh, to the north. And uh, there's a dam across uh, the lake here to keep the lake levels uh, fairly consistent. There's a berm across the uh, uh, water uh, to keep boaters from going over the uh, dam site. And there's rock outcrops uh, exposed on both sides with the bridge up above. Uh, this is part of the uh, Caddy Lake Road, which goes actually into Ontario uh, to a community called Ingolf. Uh, 